If we wanted to solve an absolute value equation where we had two absolute values set exactly equal to each other, such as the example I have written here, what we want to do is we want to think about what absolute value means, which is a distance from the origin. Whatever's inside of the quantity of absolute value, we're looking at its distance from the origin. So the only way that two quantities can be equal to each other in absolute value is if they themselves are exactly equal, like 10 equals 10, or exact opposites. The absolute value of 10 equals the absolute value of negative 10, because the distance of 10 and negative 10 from the origin is the same. It is equal to 10. So we can use that, uh, basically our definition of the absolute value, to solve an equation such as this one, which is in your homework from 4.3. Um, so to do this, what we'll do is we'll first look at the first possibility. What if they are equal? So if these two quantities inside the absolute value are equal, we solve the equation where we just drop the absolute values. Take uh, 7 thirteenths x minus 3 and set that equal to 6 thirteenths x plus 5. Now, there are multiple ways to solve this equation. Um, we can work with it with the fractions, just start moving the numbers and moving the x's, the variable quantities, uh, to one side and the numbers to the other. But I have a little trick I like to use whenever I have fractions. I call it fraction busting. Um, where you just look for the lowest common denominator amongst all the terms, and you multiply both sides of the equation by that LCD. So in this case, the LCD would be 13. So I will use uh, 13. So I will multiply both sides of this equation by 13. It's going to actually be distributed throughout uh, both sides, clearing the actual fractions. So on the left side of this equation, I will end up with just 7x, and then 13 times negative 3, I'll end up with negative 39. And on the other side of this equation, uh, distributing the 13, I'll end up with 6x. And distributing the 13 to the 5, I will end up with 65. And then I need to solve this equation. So to do that, I will use... Uh, just my properties of equality, moving variables to one side. So let's go ahead and subtract 6x from both sides. Um, and then at the same time, since I move the variables to the left, I'm going to move my numbers to the right. So add 39 to both sides. And I will end up with, uh, conveniently, on the left side, I'll end up with just x. And on the right side, I will end up with 65 plus 39 ends up giving me 100 and four. Now it would be easy to say that that is the final answer, but that is only half of the answer because as I mentioned at the beginning, we want to make sure that we remember if two quantities are an absolute value set equal to each other, that they are either exactly equal to each other, dropping the absolute values, or exact opposites of each other. So we have one solve. So to solve the other equation, I want to look at what would happen if these were opposites of each other. Uh, and when I say these, I mean the expressions inside the absolute value. So if the left side of that equation, 7 thirteenths x minus 3, was equal to the opposite, and you can actually make either side opposite, uh, but you can't make them both opposites because that would undo each other, so that would go back to them being equal. So we'll just make the right side opposites 6 over 13 x plus 5. And then we'll solve this equation. So to solve this equation, uh, first thing we'll go ahead and distribute that negative. So we've got 7 thirteenths x minus 3 is equal to negative 6 thirteenths x minus 5. And then I do want to go ahead and just use that same little fraction busting tri uh, trick that we used on the other side. Um, turns out that it's a similar equation where the LCD is 13, so I'll just multiply both sides by 13. Um, but just a slight difference of signs on one side, so we will actually get a different answer. So we end up with 7x minus 39 on the left and negative 6x minus 65 on the right. And then we'll go ahead and move variables to one side. So move the variables. Let's go ahead and add 6x and move the constants to the right side, so add 39 to both sides. And when we do that, we end up with 13x. 
is equal to a negative 65 plus 39 gives us a negative uh, 26. And then all we have left to do is divide both sides by 13. So when we divide both sides by 13, and I'm actually going to come right over here to squeeze it onto this page, uh, we end up finding that x is equal to negative 2. So now remember, we actually had two answers, so I do have to run one more page over here. Uh, we ended up with two answers. Our answer from when the two quantities inside absolute value were equal was 104, and when they were opposites, it was x equals negative 2. So to, to finish out here, let's go ahead and write our solution set. We ended up with our two answers, x equals negative 2 or 104. Okay, with a comma, we could say it like that. Um, kind of a cleaner mathematical way to do it is to actually use the set notation, which is a squiggly bracket, negative 2, comma, 104, since we had more than one solution in our solution set. So that would be the answer for this particular absolute value equation.